What's up everybody, Mr. Troy here. I got myself a delicious ruby red seltzer water, free of calories and sugar, and I'm ready to do some math with Mr. Troy. You weren't expecting that, were you? Gotta keep them guessing. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce a new theorem, which you can see at the top of the screen, but before we do that, we're just gonna kind of talk about working through a problem. So, knowing that this function has a zero, and remember that means that this x value will make this output zero, at x equals negative four, show its complete factorization. So I'm gonna start this by doing synthetic division by plugging in x equals negative four. If you like long division better, you could do long division by x plus four. Okay, start by writing out the coefficients. Make sure you get the positives and negatives right and make sure that you check whether or not you have any skipped terms because you'd need to put a zero in there for that. Set up your synthetic division bracket, drop, and take it from there. Okay, so this does in fact have negative four as a zero. And remember, this is the quotient. So that means that this factors to x plus four times x cubed minus nine x squared minus four x plus 36 with a remainder of zero. Now, one way that I know that this is gonna be an x cubed is because I'm factoring an x out of it. So x to the fourth, take one away, you've got x cubed. I like this about synthetic division that by looking at the quotient, I can see the next place I'm going to go. I'm going to be able to factor this by grouping. Now, before we do that, let's talk about this new theorem. This new theorem says that any polynomial function that has real coefficients may be written as the product of only linear and quadratic factors with real coefficients. So what that means is this will always break down to at least a linear and a quadratic. It might break down to a linear, a linear, and a linear, but it has to break down one step further. There is no cubic formula, asterisk, that we will ever use, but there are plenty of techniques to where we can go from here. There is a cubic formula it's like three pages long. First you have to depress the cubic. It's this whole thing. It's pretty cool, uh, but more on that, never. Okay, so we're gonna factor this by grouping now. X plus four times, and you might wanna take this off to the side and do this as a separate uh, thing, or maybe you're totally comfortable um, with uh, with doing this here, I don't know. Some people don't like the double parentheses. So this is gonna to factor to x plus four times x squared minus nine. Ooh, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. To x squared minus four. I wrote down what I wanted it to be, not what it actually is, times x minus nine. Remember, don't double count this, just because it appears here and here, you're actually factoring it out as its own big greatest common factor of x minus nine. Then this factors to x plus four times x plus two times x minus two times x minus nine. You have reached the complete factorization if you have as many linear factors 
as the degree of the original expression or equation. So the fact that I came up with four factors in a fourth degree equation or fourth degree expression, however you want to think about it, that lets me know that I have the complete factorization done. Hey, I'm up here now. Okay, so that was an example of the linear factorization theorem. The linear factorization theorem tells us that we can always take a polynomial down to linears, but we might have to use imaginary numbers. On that particular one that we did, we were able to get all the way down to linears without using you know, anything but integers, but you can always do it if you're willing to use imaginary numbers. Okay, um, from yesterday, complex zeros occur in conjugate pairs. If one plus four i is a zero, then one minus four i has to be a zero. And irrational zeros that have square roots in them are also going to appear in pairs. So if one minus the square root of five is a zero, one plus the square root of five is going to be a zero. Okay, this is gonna happen as long as the uh, polynomial has rational coefficients for the uh, irrational zeros, and as long as it has real coefficients for the uh, complex zeros. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna cut your work in half. If you're able to find that two i is a zero, then you know for sure that negative two i is a zero. I wanna make sure that we know all of the uh, different ways that things can factor. So I wanna talk about the different ways things that factor over the integers or using rational numbers, things that factor over the reals or using irrational numbers, and things that factor over the complex numbers or using imaginary numbers. And this is kind of a, uh, a tiered kind of hierarchy of, of doing this. So the only one of these that is going to factor over the integers is going to be the first one. So the only one that's going to factor using integers, or that would give you rational zeros, is the first one. So if I asked you to factor this and I said use integers or give me the ones that have rational zeros, then you would only be able to factor the first one and everything else would stay the same. Now the reason for that is because x squared plus four doesn't have real zeros. x squared minus five doesn't have rational zeros. And x squared minus 10x plus 26 doesn't have real zeros. So if you look at the remaining parts, x squared plus four does not have real zeros because its zeros would be plus or minus two i. Well, it's zeros, you know x squared equals negative four. The same thing for x squared minus 10x plus 26. If you take the discriminant of that, b squared minus four times a times c, you're going to get a negative number. But x squared minus five does have real zeros. They are just irrational. So I want you to think of x squared minus five as a difference of squares. And you say, Mr. Troy, five isn't a perfect square. Yeah, whatever, pretend it is. So if it were a perfect square, it would break up to its square roots x minus root five, x plus root five. The other ones aren't gonna break up that way. All right, and finally, factoring over the complex numbers or giving a complete linear factorization. It means I need to get both of these 
down to a linear. So you just have to find the zeros. The most foolproof way to find the zeros is by using the quadratic formula. The easiest way is using the square root method. So for example, this one, its zeros are going to be plus or minus 2i. And I'll write that out for you here. I would guess that math teachers probably write the letter x thousands of times more frequently than other people. So this would be x plus 2i and x minus 2i. We talked in an earlier unit about thinking about that as a difference of squares, or you could just say, how do I make x squared plus 4 equal to 0? Well, x squared would have to be negative 4, and x would have to be plus or minus 2i. Well, that's where my factors come from. Minus 2i is, is the 0 for this factor. Positive 2i is the 0 for this factor. Okay. For x squared minus 10x plus 26, you can plug that into the quadratic formula. We already found that the discriminant was going to be negative 4. So I'm going to get 10 plus or minus 2i all over 2, or 5 plus or minus i. Okay, now this is the point part that you really have to pay attention to because this is what throws people off. If these are your zeros, then your factors are x minus 5 plus i and x minus 5 minus i. They're both minuses. That really throws people off sometimes. Okay, so kind of one of the capstones of doing this is to uh, take an imaginary zero and figure out what all of the zeros are. Okay, so I'm going to get you started on this. Based on that earlier theorem, if 1 plus 3i is a zero, then 1 minus 3i has to be a zero as well. You have two options here. One is you can do synthetic division using 1 plus 3i. It's fine if you want to do that. Now, the problem with it is that you have to do a lot of foiling of imaginary numbers, so you might not want to do that. The other thing to say is that if 1 plus 3i is a 0 of f and 1 minus 3i is a 0 of f, then these are factors. which means that this x squared minus 2x plus 10. So you could do long division with x squared minus 10x plus minus 2x plus 10, and you could figure out what this is going to be. All right, why don't you give that a try? Try to find all of the zeros of this f of x knowing that these two things are zeros. You can either use synthetic division or you can use long division with that quadratic. Have fun. Oh yeah, I'm playing my theme music at the end, so it gives me a way that I can, you know, put the, the, those end screen cards there that no one ever clicks on. And that's okay. You know, bum, bum, ba -da -da -bum, ba -da -bum, bum, 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 bum. Hey, that's the wrong song, isn't it? That's, mm, no, that's copyrighted.